talk about sign up journey. I'm going to show you some code on the Kodiri platform to see how do we deal with authentication and all these things. Yeah, encryption, cookie handling, session, storage, all the things. So uh, today I'd like to draw some pictures that will hopefully help to understand how the sign up flow works. So, first of all, what we got, the first thing we got is the user that you'll see hopefully in a minute. Yeah, so, <laughs> fantastic, right? <laughs> so this is a user, right? And the user will try to uh, sign up into the Codity platform, right? So in other words, the user will land on this page, right? So what the user gets, he gets a form. Some of you are working with forms already. We can ignore titles, pentagraphs, all these things. Let's focus on the, on the form itself. So I got a React component called sign up form, unsurprisingly. And the component essentially is just, you know, it's just a form with some fields. In reality, I don't have my inputs hard coded. So I have separate components, you see? for each input. So I have a component for the first name, I have a component for the last name, for the email, for the password, and for the confirmed password, yeah? And the important thing here is that whenever we submit, we press the submit button or we press enter, we call the sign up method. And the sign up method, essentially, because that component is pretty complex already, so I've created a function in a different file called sign up, and the sign up file, you see, I'm sure you feel you know, you know these things already, right? So we're calling rest slash sign up. So in other words, back to our friend user. So you will see with the laptop, essentially in the sign up form, it will, it takes a while to reflect the changes, unfortunately, but it will essentially Hello. Right, this is going to be more complicated than I thought, right? So let me complete the drawing and let's see if it's get displayed, otherwise we'll find an alternative. Right, doesn't want to get displayed, right? That was a big failure. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Let me show you, let's ignore this, this drawing and let's try to do something different. So, uh, can we zoom that? No, we can't either. All right, so let me open the tools and we'll try to represent the picture in a different way. So, I'll create a new snippet and that will hopefully help us to understand the process. So, we got a user that performs a request to, well, let, me, let me rephrase that. So I create two columns, front end, back end, actually three columns and database. Yeah. And then why I'm doing that is because the front end will send a request to rest slash sign up. Something like that, yeah? Right, and obviously the backend will capture the request and it will proceed to evaluate, yeah? I'm doing a post, as some of you are, really, are doing already in your team apps, right? So REST sign up. What REST sign up means? Well, I need to go to my backend and eventually, you see, I'm capturing the post action, app.post. So whenever any user requests access to REST sign up, then I have a method. I'm delegating the responsibility of the sign up journey into a method called sign up candidate. So if we check the details of sign up candidate, again, there's a lot of complexity here, which I'm not going to explain. But the most important thing is, uh, well, we do a couple of checks if the user already exists, to show errors, all these things. And um, let's have a look to this add candidate method. Eventually we redirect, so we keep invoking methods, if else, all around. But at the end of the journey, 
at the end of the journey, add person. Let me check the method add person. Because add person, look, that's the first thing I would like to highlight. Yeah. So we send the password of the user. But obviously, we don't want to store the password in plain text. That would be scary, right? That would be <laughs> not, probably not even legal. You know, I don't think this is happening anymore, but if you've been using the internet for, for a while, you'll remember some web pages when you said, I forgot my password. Yeah? Today, you got an email and you reset your password. But in the past, they send you an email with your password. Hey, your password was whatever, yeah? Sexy boy 25, yeah? <laughs> Why you know my password, right? So, <laughs> say it again? Is that your password, Sule? <laughs> ah, right. Yeah, yeah, because you are pretty young. But it, it used to work like that, right? And that was scary because that means that the owner of that website <laughs> had access to all the password in plain text, right? So we obviously, as a code we don't know what password you have, right? And how is that possible? Because that get encrypted password. So there is a very popular uh, library in Node called Bcrypt. Bcrypt. So Bcrypt takes a string with your password, yeah, sexyboy25, and it transforms it into a weird long token. Yeah? And this is a unidirectional process. We cannot revert it. So one thing is about encrypting and one thing is about hashing. Two separate things. Um, so when you hash, that means that you transform a text into something encoded, but you can revert the process. Yeah? But when you encrypt, you randomly transform the string into something that cannot be reverted. So that means that even if someone can access our database and can get the password, there is nothing they can do with that weird text. They cannot revert it into plain text. So let's do a test. Let's, yeah, questions? Yeah. So maybe see it on the other way around. Yeah. 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 That's what I say, right? Or this in the other way around. Oh, so then it was my fault. <laughs> Sorry. So when we hash the password, it's unidirectional. When we encrypt it, it's bidirectional. You know the Enigma machine, the Nasis? They encrypt messages. Why? Because you have the right hardware they were able to decrypt it, decrypt the messages, right? Thanks to who? You know? Correct. Alan Turing, right? He was the man able to decrypt the Nazis' messages. Yeah? According to history, thanks to him, uh, so the world saved 9 million lives. Yeah? So that was uh, a programmer. So thanks to a programmer, 9 million people live and the war ended two years earlier. Right, so uh, we've got our form, so let's do something, guys. Let's sign up. Uh, this is my local environment, so I'll attack a fake database, if you accept the expression. So I create a user call, uh, test, and then checking stuff. Um, password will be test at test.com, and password will be hello. And hello. Yeah. So I'll sign up. Yeah. So I'm now a new user in the code. Oops. I'm a new user in the code platform. Actually, did I? I think I didn't connect to the. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I didn't connect to Hangouts. Maybe uh, Luigi is there. Okay. No one there. That's fine. Right. So then, next thing I'll do is I'll connect to. I'll get the data. Look, from my Robo3T, which you already know, I cannot zoom that, unfortunately, but I'll try to copy it somewhere so you can get the details, right? So, back to my VS Code. So this is how my new user looks in the database. You see the password, right? It's clearly not saying hello. Right, so that's the first part of the process. 
Yeah, when we sign up, oh, I got the picture back. <laughs> right, this is not going to work, but anyway. So when we sign up, essentially, the back end, sends the request to the database. Yeah, I'll repeat that in the in dev tools, just for simplicity reasons. So the backend uh, has the password and then sends all the body to the database. So here we got first name, whatever. Password will be something random, completely random. So I hope you agree that even if someone gets access to our database, which shouldn't happen at all, of course, but even in the most catastrophic scenario, the worst thing they can get is the email. No, they cannot get the password. No? What's the password? You don't know. You don't know the password of the user. Pretty easy to match. I mean, of course, the thing is, if your password is one, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. It's not that simple. It's not that simple to, to get to decrypt that. The thing is, it's much simpler. If I know there is a user called test at test.com, for me, it will be much simpler to go to the website, wherever it is, and try different uh, passwords. Yeah? Hello, one, two, three, four, sexy girl, 19, all these things, right? <laughs> yes, 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 right. Oh, it's back, right? Oh, sorry about that. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, so that's the process of storing a password into the database. But wait a minute. Okay, so that explains how now I'm authenticated because I send the request, the backend says, okay, welcome. So the backend send the message to the front end and now I'm authenticated, right? But now the question, which is not obvious, is if I refresh the page, what do you think? Will it still be authenticated or not? Yes. It's not that obvious because if you work with React, with React State, every time you refresh the page, yeah, changes are flushed, are wiped. But with the authentication, if I refresh, I'm still authenticated. It's obvious from a human, from a UX point of view. Imagine you have to authenticate everything you refresh the page. Yeah, that will be a pain in the ass. But it works. Why it works? Because Correct, because of cookies. Let's do something. Let's sign up again with DevTools open. This is very important. This is very important to understand how the sign up journey uh, works. So I'll keep the network tab open and I'll try to sign up with a different user. Oops, so that will be hello and then Sule, no, another one, hello test, and then test2 at test2.com and password again, hello, hello, right? So pay attention to the network because something incredible, well, not incredible, right? But something interesting will happen. So when I click uh, on the start, on the submit button, Uh, what is my network? Oh, wait a minute. Is it too soon? Oh. Uh, okay, wait a minute, guys. I need zoom is too high, so I need to. Ah, here you go. So, right, so I'll find it. I'll find it. Uh, sign up. Yeah, look. So you see here we got the post to the sign up 200. That means the request went through. A good, a good, a good, a good. And then Look, look, as part of the response headers, yeah, 
response headers. We got few things, but the most important one is that one. Set cookie. Set cookie. Whenever we sign up, the backend is setting a cookie for us. What a cookie means? A cookie is a piece of information that persists into the browser. So when we sign up, the backend says, please create a cookie with the user of the session. So next time user refreshes, we'll check if that cookie is there. If the cookie is there, we'll assume the user is authenticated. And how the backend does that? This does not happen magically. And this is the next thing. You remember we talked about Bcrypt? Now I'd like to show you about something called client sessions. So client sessions is a middleware on uh, Express. I think they move it, if I'm right. I mean, there are multiple ways to solve the same problem, right? So I'm just giving you my approach. Doesn't necessarily have to be the, the best one, and for sure it's not the only one. So we can set up a middleware. A middleware means every time there is a request into the front end, just uh, run this function, right? So in that particular case, we say that every time we run a request from the front end, yes, check the authentication. Again, I'm not asking you to understand everything, but just to give you an idea, thanks to that middleware, the backend can set up a cookie in the web browser. Yeah? And with that cookie, we can, set, for instance, set uh, so how long the cookie will be alive. In our case, 30 days. That means that if you don't authenticate, if you don't use the platform in 30 days, you'll sign out for security reasons. Yeah? Uh, obviously, I've hidden the secret word because actually this is not hashing, this is scripting. So even though the cookie in the web browser, you see, it's a still weird code, you see? In reality, in reality, the backend needs to decrypt it. Yeah, because every time you do a request, we want to see who is doing the request. We want to check the user ID, we want to check the email, we want to check the permissions. Are you an admin? Are you an admin? Yes, no, all these things, yeah? So that's the cookie the backend is setting. And how do we check that in the web browser? So, you know, on top, we've got several tabs. One of them is applications. If you check on application tab, look what happened on the left-hand side, the storage. Yeah, and one of the storage is, ooh, session. So thanks to that cookie, which value is hidden somehow, yeah, I mean, we're not hosting your password or anything weird here. That's the email. But it's a good practice still to hide the information somehow, right? So why? If I'm working with someone else's computer, yeah, if it's in plain text, I will be able potentially to access some details of the person, right? So that's the way you protect against, against that problem. Right, so that's our session. That means that everything we refresh, the backend will access the cookie. Hey, do we have a session cookie? Yes, if we have a session cookie, if it hasn't expired, blah, 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 then the user is authenticated. That means we can return data, yeah? So you know, for instance, the videos, they are private for boot campers. How we do that? Thanks to that cookie, yeah? When someone tries to access the videos, the backend checks the cookie. Is the user authenticated? Yes, okay, but that's not enough. Has that player access to the bootcamp? If there is a flag, right? If the flag is set to true, then the backend will return 200 and the code, the videos. If the user is not authenticated, or if it's authenticated, but it's not part of the bootcamp, then the backend will reject it, will redirect somewhere else, or will show an error, whatever. Yeah? So thanks to the cookie. Does anyone know? Obviously, if we refresh, it still works, right? I hope we agree on that. But what happens? If I delete the cookie, you just, uh, <laughs> yeah. So if I delete the cookie and I refresh the page, then what? Let's have let's have a look. Look at the menu on the left hand side and all these things. Eh? You got nothing. You are not allowed. Yeah, this is my local data, but in production, probably you'll get redirected to a non-authorized page. 
but at least you can clearly see it doesn't work anymore. Regardless of whether I'm redirected or not, it doesn't work. Yeah, I need to log in again or to sign up again. Yeah. So that's pretty much how the uh, the flow works on sign up. Yeah. Um, so once you sign up, you can sign out. You know what we do when we sign out, right? Clear the cookie. Yeah, clear the cookie, refresh the page. That's it. Then you're a guest user. Any question, guys? No? Yep. Correct. Yeah, yeah, a flag somewhere. Yep. Yep. So, what's the question? You want to see the code? All right. So, look, easy. That's it. You see? Yeah. Thanks to the middleware, Express has something called session. Do you know when you create a route, you got a callback function with two arguments? Which arguments, guys? Do you remember that? Uh, response request. No, request response, correct. Request response. Look at where the session is stored. In the request. Thanks to that, you can pass that object all the way down, right? So we can pass the request to any component, request.session. So for instance, to, talking about the videos, right? We got the reference to the database, to MongoDB, and then the session. So if you are a guest user, probably that will be undefined or empty object. But if you're authenticated, the session will have your details. First name, last name, yeah? So based on that, look, we have a sexy method, is bootcamp member. Yeah? So then, what is that is bootcamp member doing based on the session? Yeah, you get the idea, right? So we're checking if the user belongs to any of these free plans. If that's true, then you are authorized to check that content. And then you may be asking yourself, uh, how do you do that? How do you add uh, these permissions? Well, you don't get that access because the session is also available in the front end. In other words, if I sign in with an admin user, you see, I got options that you don't have here. Why? Because if, thanks to the session, I can check if I'm an admin or not. If I'm an admin, then what we can do is we can get access, for instance, to all the list of 700 players, click on any of them, edit them. Oh, not authorized. That's interesting. I should. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that problem, guys. Maybe that's a bug, right? I should be authorized to check these things. Uh, let me check with another user. That's weird. Right. Uh, yeah, maybe there is a bug somewhere. I need to check that. Let me check with a real user, maybe. Oh, that's weird. I cannot show you that. Well, anyway, I'll check with my own user. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, thing is, so this is, I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with that view because if you want to check your avatar or some details, you get access. However, you don't have access to all the details. I got things here that you don't have, for instance, that. So here is where, when uh, we got a new booking in the Kodiri platform, we can assign these permissions. And also some of you this weekend will get that tick. Yeah? So that will give you the blue tick in the platform, right? So these sort of, these options are only available for, uh, for uh, um, admin access, of course, yeah? So yeah, that's pretty much the way, the way it works. So we have an is bootcamp member. So whenever a functionality is only available for certain type of users, I'm talking about uh, videos, but also applies to the UI training, right? If you try to access UI training, it won't work if you're not a bootcamper. So it's the same method. I'm reusing the same logic again, again, and again. 
which is something that you should do. Because if tomorrow we have a new plan, for instance, weekends, yeah, we need to change it once, and then all the features will inherit that capability, that logic. Right, so that's about sign up. Let's quickly talk about sign in because we are out of, no, not out of time, we have five minutes. So the sign in is pretty much the same principle. So on sign in, uh, can I go back to, to where? Let me go back to the DevTools. Here we go. So this is, oops, sorry. Uh, this is sign up. But we got sign in. So how do we check when you sign in if uh, the, you are a valid user and all these things, right? So first of all, the front end sends a request, rest slash sign in. It's pretty similar, right? So the back end, so what do we do on the back end? We do a few things. Yeah, the first thing is. Correct, that's the first thing. So what we got on the back end? We got email and password, right? So based on that, the first thing we do is first email exists. That's the first thing, right? If the email doesn't exist, wrong credentials. Out. Right? But what happens if the email exists? Well, that's, that's, that's correct. If, if email exists, then, as Walter said, has the password. That means transform sexy lady 78 into hash, whatever. Yeah. And then we compare that weird hash against your hash in the database, wherever it is. Here you go. Yeah. So a, password, a string password will always uh, convert to the same hash. Yeah. If you are using the same secret key, yeah, of course, it will, it will be deterministic. Yeah, map, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. So again, we don't know your password, but we know the result of encoding your password, of hashing your password. So we compare what you type against what we have in the database. If the string, because that's a string, it's a weird string, yes, but that's a string, right? You can compare the string. So if both string match, the password is correct. Yeah? What so. Say it again? What if you lose your That's a good question. If we lose the secret key, we may not be able to log in. <laughs> Anyone. Anyone, right? Uh, so if we lose the secret key, yeah, you have a problem. <laughs> you need to keep your secret key safe somewhere, right? Um, yeah, so that's the way the password works. So once we agree, let me see, maybe we can see some code. Um, so session, where is that? I'm sure, look, we got same process, right? You got, we got sign up and now we got sign in. So let's have a look to the sign in method. So sign in, sign in, sign in. You see, first of all, try to get the player and then, okay, resolve it. That means, hey, what happened with this guy? So if that person doesn't have any password, that doesn't happen anymore. But a long time ago, you, it was possible to sign up without a password, right? So if it doesn't have any password or the password is not valid, return a 401, the credentials are not correct. That's the error you get when you type the wrong password, right? Otherwise, that means the user is correct. So that line is vital. Line number 44, set the session. Yeah, that means, look, will assign to the session your personal details. First name, last name, email. Not the password, eh? but person, first name, last name, email. In other words, we are setting the cookie again. Yeah? If you change your laptop, new laptop, you've never signed up before, but you got a user in the Kodiri platform, you sign in, yeah? So then we set a cookie for you. That means if you refresh the page, you'll be still authenticated. Yeah, that's the way signing works. That's pretty common. That's pretty common, to be honest. We also set a geolocation, right? 
So that means that based on your IP, we know where are you. I mean, this is not very accurate. We don't want to be accurate. We don't care if you are in Hammersmith or in Holborn. But, second? An idea. an idea this is mostly important for the countries right we know how many people are joining from india from the uk yeah that's the important thing um yeah and, and that's pretty much the process yeah so again just to wrap this up front end request to the back end the back end checks something if it's sign up has the password save it into the database if it's signed in, has the password again, compare against the password in the database. If they match, okay. If they don't match, wrong, error. Uh, how how yep. do you set those sessions? I mean, how do you set? Well, that, that, that's, that's transparent. So this is thanks to uh, middleware. So session is an object. Okay. So whenever you change the object, Express will change the cookie and everything for you. Yeah, that's the beautifulness. So if you check the set session method, yeah, look session.user so session is an object so inside of the user i'm saving your details that's it right something to note and i didn't know and this is why it could be an exception to all commands that if you get many details in your profile like uh scores that's a good example right every time you do a training you so eventually there is a size limit on the cookie and things like that right so if we try to save a big chunk of data the cookie won't be saved and that means that even though we'll be sending we'll send you the message yes thank you authentication correct it won't really work right so we need to be a bit careful in technically speaking about what do we save into the session yeah but that's the only thing once we go once we do that next time the user tries to go to slash rest slash admin slash whatever then we'll have access to that object so then we'll be able to see if the user is granted access or not to that resource How many cookies? How, how big are they here in the owner platform? I don't know. That depends on the platform. There is a limit on the size of the cookie. I don't remember the limit, but there is a limit. But generally speaking, a cookie is not to save all the, your details, right? It's just to save something minimum that helps you to deal with the logic of the app. I've, I've seen this error where the cookie exceeds. Yeah. So I, I, I know a few platforms which. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 fair enough. Yeah, yeah, you see. Yeah. After browsers yeah. So cookies are the oldest persistent storage system in the web. Yeah, they are as old as the web is. They, there have been many attempts to kill cookies. Yeah, likewise, there have been many attempts to kill the email, right? But they're still there, right? Recently, and I think that was literally this month, Google on their I.O. conference, they presented an alternative to cookies. But we'll see, yeah? I don't think there is any problem with cookies. We just need to be careful. And also now with the GDPR and all these things, yeah? So we should be careful of what we store in there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I think the biggest problem with the cookies is the people who use what kind of browser. Yep. If they have access to the cookie, I think you can copy them. Yep. Like, I don't know, your cookie session of Facebook, for example. They can yeah, of course, they do, they do that, right? And this is one of the main problems with cookies, that everyone can access the cookies, right? In our case, because we are encrypting the cookie, Amazon has nothing to do with that information. But Amazon can save your cookie in some format. So whenever you are browse surfing the internet and you go to Reddit and you've been searching for... I don't know, 4K TVs and you get the, the advert, right? Buy a 4K TV, even if you got it already, right? So this is because they have a cookie and obviously they can access the cookie. So in that cookie, they say, this guy has been searching 4K TVs or uh, sexual toys or whatever, right? <laughs> <laughs> they know that and they offer you relevant content, yeah? Yeah, of course. They, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Technically speaking, it's all thanks to the cookies because a cookie is something that they can access later on from any other website, right? So. I 
I don't remember. I read that like a couple of weeks ago. I'll send you the link. It's a, like a new alternative to, yeah. Also, apart from, apart from cookies, and I'll, I'll, and I'll leave it here, so there is something new that was introduced in 2015. But there are many new things here. We we'll talk about the storage. So cookies is clearly the, the most veteran mechanism. But now we've got things like local storage and session storage. Yeah? So these two new, relatively new mechanisms are an alternative to cookies. And I'll tell you something. Actually, I think when you set up your middleware, you remember the middleware? When you set up the middleware, I think there is a way to say, instead of saving a cookie, save uh, data in the local storage. So there are alternatives, right? There are many different ways to configure that. So you know what local storage is? That's any storage in your browser. It's uh, similar to a cookie, yeah, but it works differently. And session storage is similar to local storage, but the main difference is local storage persists forever unless you explicitly remove it. However, session storage dies. Yeah, once you kill the browser, yeah, it dies. And Ricardo, all these functionality uh, are not working in incognito. Mm, it, no, it, do, it does work on incognito. So when you start incognito window... They don't track, or maybe they will use the cookie or something. No, no, that's the same thing, that's the same thing. When you try incognito, you can still sign in, right, in websites. Yeah. That means that you can still handle cookies. The difference is, when you kill incognito, everything is deleted. Uh -huh. So if you open incognito again, there's no there is nothing, no history, yeah, that's the difference. But of course, even incognito, if you open incognito, you sign in on a website, if you check the cookies, they're there, right? So you should be careful with these things. Anything else, guys? Yeah, I have a question. Yep. So, you know when they say, for example, uh, some people have accessed a million uh, passwords on Yahoo or whatever, right? So does that mean there is, they access like the table with hash? The well, not necessarily. It depends. They may have access to an API. Yeah. So what happens is there is an API called REST slash users. Yahoo.com REST users. And they found a way to get the data from there. So they don't need explicit access to the database credentials. But thanks to Node, they may be able to find an endpoint where all this information is fetched. Yeah. Oh, okay. And how they manage to get plain password text, I don't know, to be honest. It's <laughs> maybe they found the secret key and they found or maybe you know sometimes we think that huge companies they do really weird software architecture and stuff like that you remember what happened with uh, sony playstation in 2010 oh. you remember that one right yeah, it was yes. for months for months for three or four months the server was down yeah, playstation the huge the most important entertainment system in the world, right? Why that happened? Because someone realized that all the passwords of the PS network, they were available in plain text. So they got access like to 50, five, zero million accounts with all the passwords, all your passwords, all my passwords, everything was in plain text. In, my, in Sony, that's such a huge disaster. I think they had everything in an Excel file somewhere. <laughs> I mean, that, that's why the, the system was down for four months, because they had to rebuild everything from scratch, right? Because it was completely wrong, right? And so reputation takes ages to get, right? And you can ruin it in, in five minutes, so. Yeah. 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 This is year 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that happens all the time. Yeah, it's what it is, right? So generally speaking, the big companies, so there are companies that they do uh, penetration tests and they check how robust your system is. If you want to check how robust your system is, the best thing is not to test the system by yourself. Of course, that's a first a really good first step, but in reality you are very opinionated about how to use the app. So the best way to check how strong your application is against attacks is to ask someone, someone else, an external person, to test it. Because that person wouldn't be as opinionated as you are because you are used to click on the same places. But that person may try to do different things too, yeah? And that's the way that you check it. 
that's what, what we call audits, yeah, to check the, how robust your system is. Um, uh, I'll tell you something else, but I need to stop recording because I don't want to share that. So, uh, anything else? <laughs> no? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the way he did it, it was, I think, it first was with a USB, but later he created one new hack, because the PlayStation patch is free. The hack was related with the browser, because PlayStation has access to the, has a browser, you know, it's not Chrome, yeah. it's not Firefox, it's obviously a bigger browser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they hacked it with JavaScript. The strength of your system, no, but that's the thing, the strength of your system is determined by the strength of the weakest yeah. component, yeah? If your system is strong, but one door is open, yeah. that's the way it works, right? Cool, thank you guys. And, uh,